Today we will be doing a lesson from the more picture perfect science lessons called Over in the Ocean. The, this lesson focuses on grades K through 2, but I chose a standard from second grade. 2 LS4 1 Make observations of plants and animals to compare the diversity of life in different habitats. First, I'll start out my lesson by engaging my students and reading them a book. Um, I'll introduce the book, Over in the Ocean in a Coral Reef, written by Marianne Burks, illustrated by Jeanette Cannon. Before I start reading, I'm going to ask a couple questions like, have you ever heard of a coral reef? Or from looking at the cover of this book, what do you think might be in a coral reef? And after I ask my questions about the book, I'm going to give the students a chance to answer questions and they'll give me answers such as seahorses, fish, plants, and any other example of animals in a coral reef will suffice. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start reading Over in the Ocean in a Coral Reef by Marianne Burks, illustrated by Jeanette Cannon. Over in the ocean, far away from the sun, lived a mother octopus and her octopus one. Squirt, said the mother. I squirt, said the one. So they squirted in the reef, far away from the sun. Over in the ocean, where the sea grasses grew, lived a mother parrotfish and her parrotfish, too. Grind, said the mother. We grind, said the two. So they ground on the coral where the sea grasses grew. Over in the ocean, in a sea anemone, lived an old mother clownfish and her clownfish three. Dart, said the mother. We dart, said the three. So they darted all around the sea anemone. While I'm reading, I would point out the type um, of clay that the artist used for each picture, and I'll ask the students if they know, and it's polymer, so I'll explain that. Um, over in the ocean on a sandy sea floor lived the old mother stingray and her little stingray four. Stir, said the mother, we stir, said the four, so they stirred with their fins on the sandy sea floor. Over in the ocean where the scuba divers dive lived an old mother puffer and her puffer fish five. Puff, said the mother, we puff, said the five. So they puffed in and out where the scuba divers dive. Over in the ocean doing somersault tricks lived an old mother dolphin and her little dolphin six. Jump, said the mother, we jump, said the six. So they jumped and played doing somersault tricks. Over in the ocean, in their sea fan heaven, lived a mother angelfish and her little angel seven. Graze, said the mother, we graze, said the seven. So they lazed and they grazed in their sea fan heaven. Over in the ocean, very streamlined and straight, lived a mother needlefish and her needlefish eight. Skitter, said the mother, we skitter, said the eight. So they skittered through the water, very streamlined and straight. Over in the ocean, drifting in a yellow line, lived an old mother gruntfish and her little grunts nine. Grunt, said the mother, we grunt, said the nine. So they grunted and they kissed, drifting in a yellow line. Over in the ocean, in their turtle grass den, lived an old father seahorse and his seahorse's ten. Flutter, said the father, we flutter, said the ten. So they fluttered all around in their turtle grass den. Over in the ocean where the sea creatures play, while the parents were all resting, they up and swam away. Find us, said the children, from ten to one. When you find all the creatures, then this rhyme is done. Okay. After reading, I'm going to show, I would show the students pictures in the back of the book of the illustrator who actually had to do research for this book. This is the picture here that I would show. And I would explain that she had to swim near coral reefs to obtain different to obtain information for the book. Okay. Using this book, we will be introduced to and learn about some of the amazing animals that live in coral reefs. Now I'm going to reread this book to you for a scientific purpose. This time while I'm reading, I would like for you all to look very carefully at the different animals that live in coral reefs and observe their special characteristics. For example, while I'm reading, I'm not going to reread again, but while I was rereading, I would give examples such as on the octopus page, um, the baby octopus has eight arms and an oval-shaped head and two large eyes. 
So while I'm rereading, I would just ask different questions um, explaining the characteristics. Um, and I would also, after I was reading for the second time, I would say, what were some of the unique ways the illustrator created characteristics for each animal? And an example answer would be that um, the illustrator used a plastic mesh bag that once held tomatoes to create fish scales on the clownfish. Um, so moving into my explore and explain portion, I will explain to the students that they'll be practicing their observation skills by using real photographs of coral reef animals. So for this part of the lesson, I will pass out a variety of different photographs that are all labeled with each um, animal's name. So I have a couple here, fan worm, sea slug, clownfish, giant clam, lionfish, coral, and green turtle. So I pass out a variety of different pictures to each student and to explore I'll ask questions such as what color is your animal, what patterns does it have on its body, how many arms or fins does it have, what shape is it, or does your photo re resemble any of the animals that we read about in our book. So next I'm going to pass out the photographs to each animal along with the ocean animal sorting page, it looks like this. And I'm going to explain to each student that they'll be using the, cir the circles on the sorting page to sort their animals into different groups. So for one example, I would say um, I'm going to be sorting animals with fins and animals without fins. So I'm going to take my green turtle and think about whether or not it has fins. And it doesn't because it has arms and legs. So I'm going to put it over in my right circle, like that. And I'm going to come across my lionfish, which does have fins, so I'm going to put this one in the other circle, like that. So then I'm going to go through and sort all these different pictures. Coral does not have fin. Giant clam does not have a fin. And I'm just using tape to tape these down. But the students, if I was doing this in the classroom, I would either do pictures and I would laminate them or I would pick up like models of different animals. So this is the clownfish and it does have a fin. So there, now all my animals are sorted, and I'll use that as a model to um, help explain to my students what they'll be doing. Um, next I'll have the students work in partners and guess um, the characteristics that each use to sort their animals. And after the, so after the students are done sorting a couple different ways, I'll ask, what different characteristics did you use to sort your animals, and were, there e were any of the animals hard to sort and why? I could also ask, do you have any questions about the animals that you are sorting? And in that case, if, if the students were to have any questions, they could go and research on their own. Um, into my elaborate section, uh, after reading and completing the sorting activity, I'm going to say to my students, reading the book over in the ocean in a coral reef and sorting the photographs made me want to learn more about coral reefs. And I'm going to ask my students, where can I look to get more information about coral reefs? And some example answers could be in a book, in a magazine, or on the internet. And then I would ask, what kinds of books could I read to find true facts and information about coral reefs? A fiction or a nonfiction book? And everybody would answer nonfiction. So next, I will select a nonfiction book to read to my students on coral reefs. Um, as I'm reading, as I read this book to my students, I've pre-selected questions. On, and I post, post them on sticky notes, so as I'm reading, I'll post those in the book just to model um, how the students will be completing the activity. So <clears throat> I'll read a couple of pages of this book, and it's Clownfish and the Other Coral Reef Life by Sally Morgan. Before I start reading, I would ask, what is a coral reef? So I have that sticky note. I'm just going to put it right on the cover. And I will also ask, how are coral reefs made? And I'll stick that right on the cover, too. 
So I'm going to start out by asking the question on, on lionfish, and I'm kind of wondering what what a lionfish is and why they have these huge long fins. So I'm going to say, um, after I read this section, I'm going to say, lionfish have deadly, and I'm going to ask the students if they can answer the question for me. So, lionfish only use their stings for defense. In other animal, if another animal threatens it, the lionfish does not need to swim away. It can simply point its deadly spines toward the enemy. So after I read this page and ask the question, I will hope, hope that students will raise their hand and tell me that lionfish have deadly spines. Next, I'm going to read this page about reef sharks, and I'm kind of curious about what they hunt. So I'm going to go and read this page. With its wide jaws and jagged teeth, the reef shark is a fierce hunter. Most sharks have a slim body and a powerful tail fin, perfect for gliding through water. Octopuses, crab, and sea snakes, and sea snakes are just some of the animals hunted by reef sharks. So at this point, I would hope that my students would raise their hand and tell me that reef sharks hunt octopus, crab, and sea snakes. After reading, I'm going to talk to the students about the questions that I asked them before, during, and after reading. Um, I, will, I will explain that thoughtful readers are those who ask questions before, during, and after, and I will ask, does anybody have any questions about the book that they would like to ask? Moving to my evaluate section, I would discuss how important it is to ask questions in science. I will explain how questions help lead scientists to answers about the world, and many problems have been solved and new things have been invented or discovered because scientists had questions about them. I'm going to explain that scientists do not always find the answers to all of their questions, but they still ask a lot of questions anyway. As a class, we'll be working together to create a coral reef question book all about coral reef animals. And this is moving into my evaluate section where um, after they finish the core after each student finishes their coral reef question page I'm going to bind them all together and make a coral reef book and that way I'll be able to assess um, each student's page so uh, I will break my after reading I'll break my students into groups and I will provide them with a couple nonfiction books or magazines on coral reef animals and I'll have them as they're reading I'll have them generate their own questions either on sticky notes like I modeled or <clears throat> they can just come up with them on their own so <clears throat> after um, they break into their groups and they research a little bit on their own, we're going to come together and I'm going to hand out the coral reef question page, which is this one right here. And students will choose a, uh, an animal that they want and they'll draw a picture of it. They'll label the animal right there with the name and then they'll choose one question that they want to know about that animal. So, like I said, all these pages will be uh, collected and bound together um, and that'll be about all for my lesson so um, when they're done with their with their core question page I'll collect those and bind those together and then we can further investigate different coral reef animals or we can look at other nonfiction books or magazines that have to do with coral reef animals thanks